We love I-bonds. Today, in today's episode, we're gonna talk about why. We'll be covering the interest rate, who they're good for, who they're not so good for, and the other things to think about when you're thinking about I-bonds. At the end, you'll know a lot more about I-bonds and if you should go ahead and get them or not. Hi, I'm Bridget Sullivan Rommel, and I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm John Shear. I have a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. Before we dig into I-bonds, I want to remind all viewers to hit that subscribe button. That helps other people on YouTube find this great information. So hit subscribe and then let's dig into iBounds, Bridget. It is one of those things that's like, you know, uh, and people are reading about it now, it's in the paper, but we've loved iBonds for a long time. Yeah, right? you even were and, quoted in uh, that's, CNBC. That's right, very iBonds. exciting. Ooh, that's yeah. right. Just... So number one thing you love about iBonds is what? Well, I mean, it's it's right up front these days, just in the last week or two here, the new rates, rates get set every six months. The current rate in iBonds is over 9.5%. I think 9. it's 9.62. 9.62%. I mean, where can you get that in a bank or a CD anyplace else, right? So, I mean, just like right in your face, 9.62% annualized interest. That is one reason why I love I-bonds. Right, exactly. (laughs) The second one reason I love I-bonds, they're safe. You know, like they're backed by the U.S. Treasury. That is considered the safest investment. It's like FDIC insurance. Right, right. So... You combine 9.62 and safe. And like, you don't know if the stock market's going to make... A lot of times, the stock market doesn't make 9.62. That's right. In a year. That's right. And a lot know, of times, they don't, and it's certainly not guaranteed if they do. You know, it goes up and down and might... Yeah. It's so interesting that, that risk and return, we call it directly correlated, right? This drug. And like, listen, the more return you expect to get, the higher risk, sort of by definition. And over a long period of time, that's exactly right. Like, there's no risk without... No return without risk. This case, we've got a little sliver of places here where, listen, you're getting better return because it's based on inflation, and inflation is a factual thing that gets calculated, right? And you're getting more return and yet taking no risk. I mean, it so rarely happens, right? Right. This is a great place to be. Um, And it's it's safe. It's also guaranteed, right? Like, listen, if you you buy a a, a I-bond today or tomorrow or any time between now and October 31st, you're going to get for the first six months, you get this 9.62% annualized rate. You right. know exactly what it's going to be, and it doesn't, it's not going to change. I mean, that's again, where do you, it's like buying a, I, I relate it to clients. Like, if you were to buy a CD, you have to leave it in there for a year. We'll talk about some of the reasons it's not so hot, like one of the drawbacks you got to think about. But if you're going to buy a CD, you know exactly what the interest rate is, you know what you're going to get out on the other end. That's what we're talking about with I bonds. FDIC insured, you mentioned, right? Everybody knows what that is. Like, listen, no matter what happens, the government can print money and you're going to get your money back at the end of the day and you're going to get this return. Like, it's fully guaranteed. There is, I mean, it's hard to over describe how valuable that is. Guaranteed getting this return on a safe investment that never goes down, right? Like, it's just, uh, it's one of those things I, I was telling a client. It's all, it's, Sounds too good to be true, right? Right, like you go, oh, what's going on here? And this is maybe the the unicorn or the exception, yeah. the rule. Like most of the time, if it sounds too good to be true, guess what we're gonna find when we dig under the hood? Yeah, this one, no, dig under the hood. This is as plain as it gets. Sometimes I I recently went on a trip, and on the trip there was another traveler who. This happens to me sometimes. Uh, people who asked me like for a hot tip, like <laughs> like back uh, harkening back to the days where they're hot stock tips. And I guess there's still hot, t- hot stock tips now, but that's not what, uh, how I approach investing or personal finance and, and hot tips. I'm a lot more measured than that. But anyway, now I can go I bonds, right. which th- does not seem like a hot tip. I mean, it's not Tesla. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Exactly. It's like buy yeah. a CD, hot tip. Like yeah, what? Right, no, exactly. in this case, that's what plays out. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. One one thing that uh, like where does the where do these fit in? We get people that mm-hmm. ask that question. We talk a little bit about drawbacks. So so the right. the major drawback or, or like who shouldn't buy an I bond, right? And and the one thing about I bonds is that you cannot get this money for a year. Right. So if you buy an I bond today, you've got to wait a, a year from now. It's not like oh you pay a penalty or like no, no you cannot get this right. right? So an example, somebody that's buying a house, right? You need to have cash 
And you can't invest it in the stock market because, golly, if the stock market goes down 40%, we've got a problem, right? right. I need to have, I got my $10,000, I need to have that for a down payment. I can't have that be worth $6,000 when I'm making a house payment, right? So, geez, should I buy an I-bond? Well, no, because what well, I don't plan to buy a house for a year, so that'll be great. But what happens if the perfect house comes up in six months or in nine months and you have, like, you don't know that exactly what the future is going to bring, right? right. So I-bonds are maybe not the right example for that. Well, it just depends on your timing. Like, sometimes you know I'm not... I'm planning on buying a house, but this is a long-term project, and I have ten thousand dollars. But it's going to be two years. I just know I'm moving, or I'm getting married, or many other things. So um, I know it's not happening right now. Right. You know. So then it's great. Right, and that's the really great clarification. If there's any chance at all that it might happen sooner, right, right, it just doesn't fit. Here's one example. We've got a client that it is exact right fit for where where it does fit exactly that list and we've got a client and their daughter's getting married next summer Mm -hmm. right and everything is set they're graduating from college they'll get married and you know we know we're not going to have to spring for this wedding here in december or in february it's going to be next june right perfect example we've got a year time frame we 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 don't want to put the money at risk we know exactly what we're our interest rate is going to be we're going to let it sit there for a year that's an ideal spot for listen there's no reason not to do that for you know that sort of a thing there is one uh thing like so the 9.6 is there the 9.62 is if you keep it in for five years if you don't keep it in for five years, so if you do take it out after one year, you don't get the whole 9.6. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so there's some slight, there's a, an adjustment there. You lose a little bit of interest, yeah, right? Exactly. That's what the deal is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so cry me a river. Yeah, you know? right, right. <laughs> You're not getting that, the whole 9.6. Th- thanks yeah. for bringing that up because yeah. I kind of skip over that right. sometimes because if you cash it out early, you lose a little bit of the interest, right? right? So that, that's a great point. And again, oh, geez, you're only getting 7% or right. I mean, 5% in today's interest rate environment. Right. Like what are we talking about here, right? So just be aware of that, though, as right. you go and buy, you go, if you cash out in a year, like, oh, wait a minute, I didn't get my 9%. Well, yeah, but you got 7 or whatever the math is for you. That's a, that's a great point. Okay, so in... To put the money in and easily, uh, $10,000 is your max. So as far, there's ways to uh, contribute more, but in a very straightforward manner, uh, 10000 is the max that's you can right. do. So that's another uh, limitation of I-bonds. Right. I think the other thing, so that, that idea of if you might need the money in a year, it's to me anyway, it's an absolute no, no don't do it. Uh, for everybody else, as I look at it, like, hey, this is on the table. And I tell clients, listen, if you've got cash in the bank, right, you got money sitting in right. a checking account, you got your emergency reserves, like, don't replace your contribution to your 401k. Right. Don't, you know, it's not do your Roth IRA, but right. you got cash sitting there. Right. And you, you know you're not going to need some portion of it for a year. Hey, this is a no-brainer. Right. There's a segment of people that I think, and I, th- I think you think the same, Bridget, on it, is um, that maybe should consider not doing it, though, even if they would could qualify. And that's the only way you can buy these is by going on to treasurydirect.gov, filling out some forms, connecting your bank account, and then you got to keep track if you buy more than one bond of what you have and where to go. And and it's you know it's not awesome technology, right? No. You know. Well, and they're not. Uh, they're like the opposite of you know. There, there's so many things that you sign up for through these days, and then you're immediately inundated with stuff. Yeah. Like they send it in your mail, and then you get five emails, and here's your statement, and this, that, the other thing. And this is not the opposite of that. Right. So it's like you get a confirmation email and then you never hear from yeah, them. like i think yeah. i bought an eye bond I, i'm not sure Did what's I, going on right forget, exactly you know like and so there's some hassle factor right, right. and if you're you know if, if dealing and we were talking a little bit before we hit record is like listen um would you drive across town to save money on gas well it depends right. if i'm saving a nickel on gas no if i'm saving three bucks a gallon on gas yeah maybe i do that stuff but it sort of depends on on how much effort you want to put in and if you can put in Ten thousand dollars. What are we talking about for interest on the year? Something like eight hundred, nine hundred bucks a year. I mean, that's significant. Well, if it stays at that same rate for both 
for the next six, six months. Yeah, right. so like for the next six months after that. But right, anyway, so, yeah. so you're getting some significant return. Like, golly, yeah. would I drive, if it takes me a couple hours to set up my account, it shouldn't do that, right? Some, and we've got some clients and golly, it's 10 minutes and away you go. But we've had other folks where they hit a snag and they got to do things. Right. And, you know, if it takes three or four or five hours, you go, listen, that's not worth 50 bucks, right? right. But if we're talking 1000 or $1,500, that would be like, oh, for, uh, yeah, five hours, that'd be a bummer, but that's 300 bucks an hour. Good, I'd make that investment. So you need to just think about the time that, and how interested you are in tracking those things. And if you're a type of person where it's difficult to keep records and things get scattered, you know, right. it's it's not a panacea, right? you got to be aware. We just want right. people to be aware of yeah. that before they exactly. sign if you're on. If yeah. you're the type of person, I'd just like to keep things as simple as possible. Just tell me what to do, where to sign. Right. I, it's it's kind of tough. Like it's not quite that uh, much of a no-brainer. Right, right. It's it's not you know it's not rocket science on the one. It's right. not so complicated like whole, but it's also not well. Geez, this is you know uh, uh, really simple thing well, necessarily. Yeah. And I think it gets the the background of the whole thing. It was I heard that Al Gore started came up with the idea was that for right, iBonds. Right, right it after replaced, he started the internet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it, it replaced old paper savings yeah, bonds. Okay. And it's t the reason that the rate is high is because it, it's illegal it, or like it's a law. Right, And it's right. tied to the inflation rate. And the inflation rate happens to be high now. So this, uh, and so that's why it's high now, right? And that's what it's marked. Okay, so it, nobody has cared about these. Right. While, or I shouldn't say nobody, right. but the interest has been much lower. It's actually 10 times higher, and this was before <laughs> the most recent rate increase. 10 times higher in the last year than it has been for years. So the website kind of reflects this whole, and the wait time if you happen to have to call them. Like it reflects the whole like, what? It was really All good. Some people are paying attention to me, you know. <laughs> it's really good technology when you had dial up internet. No, a little bit behind the times, right. but but it but it works, and it's a yeah. great place to be if you fit parameters. For many many people, this is something they should be considering. And that's right. I think those are the reasons why we love iBuzz. Right, yeah. exactly. So that I'm Bridget Sullivan Rommel. I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm John Shear. I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And if, and if you like what you hear on Friends Talk Financial financial planning, we, Bridget and I are both members of the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners, a nationwide group of fee-only, tax-focused financial advisors. And uh, if you're interested in finding an ACP advisor in your area, check out acplanners.org. And do us a favor and subscribe. Uh, if you subscribe to Friends Talk Financial Planning, it helps us with the YouTube algorithm and helps more people find our information. And with that, we'll see you next time.